Before I even start this video, shout out to B for being a real G and <laughs> suggesting this video idea of tier ranking. So shout out to you and let's go on with the video. Guys, 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 the time has come for us to rank figure skating drama. The rankings today are from least to doing the most for no reason is only your toxic mutuals are talking about it. We all have at least two toxic mutuals who just like to fight to then the moots are talking, you know, all your mutuals on your timeline are talking to everybody talking, even people you don't follow are showing up in your timeline because this shit is trending to it broke figure skating Twitter, panic, help, SOS, a lot of keyboard smashes on your timeline to legend. People are still <laughs> fighting about it. <laughs> So if you can't tell, the ranking is completely based on figure skating Twitter and just how much it broke or just emotionally distressed us. So I tried to make the list as um, international as possible, but the reality is that it's basically Team Tutberitze dramas sprinkled in with some international ones because Team Tutberitze is just covered like a tabloid in Russia. And so there's a lot more drama from Team Tutberitze, not just because they're more dramatic, but also because the media treats it with more attention or they inflate things as well. So we find out a lot about behind the scenes and they're not afraid to talk shit. Meanwhile, in the rest of the world, like Canada, USA, or Japan, unless it's a very big thing, a very big allegation, a very big serious like abuse or sexual misconduct, it's not really reported as much. They're not, the figure skaters and their coaches are not covered like tabloids like they are in Russia. So I just wanna say that there will be sprinkled in some international news that are maybe on the more serious side. When we get to those, I will treat them as such. But I also want this video to have some levity. So it's sprinkled in with Tutberitze bullshit all throughout. So just wanna put that up front. There will be some talk about allegations about sexual misconduct or um, abuse. And uh, the rest of them are just drama. Th drama is a very wide word. <laughs> well, you know, there's drama and then there's like serious drama. And we're gonna cover everything that has blown up on my timeline since I joined figure skating Twitter. So let's just get on into it. So of course, we are going to start <laughs> with what is now should be known as the Great Migration from Tutberitze, Team Tutberitze, to the Angels of Plushenko. <laughs> and that of course started with Sergei Rosarov. And I don't think it broke FS Twitter. By no means is it a legend and people are still talking about it. I think it just had your mutuals talking on your on your feed, you know? Because the reason why it became a big deal was because one, anybody that leaves Team Tutberitze, especially a skater or somebody who seemed integral at that time to the Team Tutberitze brand, but not really integral. Sergei Rosanov didn't really become a name that everybody kind of new on figure skating Twitter until he became, you know, the drama magnet that he is now. So when he moved, it was mostly about, oh no, he's opened the door and he allegedly asked every single skater at Team Tutperitze who they wanted to come. I mean, he took the Jelena sisters with him. So everybody was kind of anticipating which was the big name that was also gonna leave with him. So that was the intrigue. But when he moved and the Jelena sisters moved, it just had your mutuals talking about it because we suspected that now that the door was open, there was definitely gonna be a bigger transfer that was gonna come next. And we were right, because then came out the news of Alexandra Trusova moving. And I'm gonna say everybody was talking about it. I don't think it broke FS Twitter because once we got past the initial shock that 3A, the little army of Tutberitze was broken up, you know, Destiny's Child had left, was this their Beyonce, you know, that kind of what is happening. It also happened during quarantine, so there wasn't much happening about, so, it was a shocking news, but once people started thinking about it, people saw sense to it. She wasn't winning most competitions, Kostornaya was winning them instead, she wanted to do more quads, Sateri wasn't letting her. So once people like thought about the logic behind it, it made sense. People weren't as shocked anymore. However, <laughs> the real shock came when Kostornaya left and um, went to the Angels of Pushenko as well, given that she was supposed to win the world championship, or we all thought she was gonna if it hadn't been postponed for COVID. So I would say that her news broke FS Twitter because her news wasn't even, like, Terry didn't even see that one coming. Like, Trusova was not much of a surprise. We all kind of were expecting that, but when Kostornaya just went along, everybody was like, what the hell? Like, it was, it was pandemonium. 
on Twitter. It was pandemonium, it broke figure skating Twitter. Nobody could really figure out, even the people who the Russian media like call, for some reason Russian media again treat them like tabloids, so they call people and are like, what do you think about this? And what do you think about this? And every other figure skater and coach was like, I know why Trusova left, but I can't figure out why Kostornaya left, which the main reason why Kostornaya left was to be coached by Sergei Rosanov. And the fact that she left outside the transfer window, that was blown out of proportion. They were trying to say, we need to protect coaches, there need to be contracts, how can she leave outside the transfer window? And then also on top of the fact that she left in the middle of the Team Tutpiritsa like, camp, and she had already been given two programs. It was so just very abrupt. It was very obvious that she just kind of went rogue. <laughs> she said, F it, I am leaving on my own terms because I wanna and it's my party and I can cry if I want to and girl did she cry but you know what let's not talk about that right now <laughs> uh, another Costo uh, news is moment Costo moment is so Costonaya got COVID it looked like she was on the up and up with Angel Zupushenko and then she got COVID and that's when everybody was like oh my god I hope she's okay and when she was supposed to be recuperating from COVID a picture that a fan took <clears throat> which I'm not using out of respect for them because it wasn't a picture that was posted online with their consent it was a picture of Sergei Rosanov and Aliona Kostornaya in the mall and I'm gonna put it in mutuals just for talking because honestly it even took me like a while to see the picture I saw people talking about the picture but the picture itself wasn't like circulating everywhere but yeah it had people kind of be like wait I thought you were like trying to recover in bed like week from COVID. What are you doing here at the mall? What are you buying with Sergei Rosanov? It was just a weird moment in time that we just all lived through. Then, of course, oh God, even this picture makes me sad. When Evgenia left Team Tutperice to leave for Brian Orser. And you cannot fight me on this. This is legend because people are still fighting about it. On my timeline, on the daily, people are like, oh, maybe after COVID ends, she will go to the cricket club. People are just delusional and sad and people are still mad about the fact that, first of all, it's legendary because she was the first one to start this trend of leaving a Terry for a coach. She was the very first one. I mean, Terry, who's usually not very media uh, heavy went on a freaking campaign <laughs> almost talking about this and how much it, she didn't say how much it hurt her but obviously it did because she was out there showing her freaking receipts on her phone like what the hell and if Kenya didn't ever say truly anything completely bad about it but with time at the cricket club she would let it out that her body was not well that she needed to leave in order to keep her body composed i mean she went to the olympics on a freaking fractured leg broken bones broken bones i will never forget that so legend it's still inspiring the girls of team Tutperita today even though two out of the three have come back but let's not talk about that <sighs> and of course the next picture is her coming back is it legend are people still fighting about it Yes, but I would argue it's not as legend. So I would say it just broke FS Twitter. It did. I mean, the fact that she came back to a Terry Tutpiritsa is what triggered me. It stressed me out so much that I started this YouTube channel. That is the whole reason why I started the YouTube channel because I needed somebody that does care and understand how crazy this is to listen to me. Because again, my friends still don't care about figure skating. This whole channel and they still don't give a fuck. But yeah, definitely broke up his Twitter. I don't know if I would go as far as to call it legend. Maybe if she finds resounding success in the next season with a Terry, it will become a legend. But as of right now, not yet. Alina Sakitova's comment during the 2018 Olympics, if you don't know, during the Olympics, they've always done this, they test all the people on the pedestal and then they test a random. And Alina won the Pyeongchang 2018 Olympics, so of course she was tested for doping. And how they do that is that they test your pee and because Team Tutperitsa is notorious for not letting their kids drink water or enough water during their competition days because every little gram counts, she was so dehydrated. She was held for five hours because she couldn't pee. She was just chugging water and water and water and for five hours she couldn't pee. And when she made that comment, which wasn't during, it was after, um, it definitely made waves because it kind of led a little insight into just the Team Tutperitze, let's say, training process. Let's call it that. So I would say it had your mutuals talking. It didn't have everybody talking, but it definitely had your mutuals talking about it. Now, still at the 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to awaken a lot of feelings. <laughs> this is a very emotional competition um, for a lot of people. So during the broadcast, 
We all know that Evgenia, after she uh, ended her last performance, she didn't even know she had won or lost, but she burst out into tears. And if you watch the Russian program, you also know that the broadcaster, Tatiana Tarasova, also cried profoundly, a lot, and was saying she deserved the gold, the gold should go to her. And as you can tell, this probably didn't go out well. You know, the Zagitova fans that were saying that the broadcaster should not be that biased. And I have a theory as to why Terry also didn't cry. I had a job once where we fucked up so bad that my manager was crying, my peer was crying, and the only reason why I was not crying is because we couldn't have three people crying. <laughs> so, Evgenia Mavir was crying on the ice, Tatiana Tarasso was crying on the broadcast, the other broadcaster was also crying, and the only reason I believe that Terry was not tearing up was because we couldn't have five people crying. <laughs> And it also would have looked really bad if she was crying for one student being beaten by her other student. But anyways, uh, Tatiana Tarasa was crying. It, it, only your toxic mutuals still talk about this to this day and bring it up and weaponize that to just fuel fandom wars, honestly. Now, Kostornaya, the queen of the media. <laughs> her first press conference as an angel of Plushenko. This was the infamous interview where she said, I smile more. And to just put the cherry on top, she said, now when I make a mistake, people don't chase me around and curse at me. Anyone who just really saw Ayura Kostornaya's Leave as a Betrayal now really also had it, had it out for her. But still an iconic interview, you know. I smile more often. They made her eat those words. But, you know, let's not get into that right now. Um, I would say this had everybody talking, for sure. That interview, <laughs> every quote, it was just a lot of people were hyping her up, being like, yeah, you tell her, say it to my face. Because she even said, because Terry Tuberita made that post with that picture of Kostornaya throwing the jacket. Kostornaya even said, Aliona even said, uh, it would much prefer if you say things to my face. Like she said that. <laughs> Iconic. So like I said before, some of the international news are a little bit more serious because those are the news that are covered. And I, full disclosure, somebody asked me to talk about this before, so I thought this was the perfect medium to do it with. Nikolai Morozov is a Russian figure skating coach who works in the USA, I believe. And he is definitely a predator. He is known for marrying his students or trying to date his students. His last wife, which he divorced as well, but she was 18 that day, the day they got married. As soon as she turned 18, they got married. And he dated Shailene Bourne before that. She was also his student, they got divorced. And he tried to date Miki Ando, and he used to train Javier Fernandez. And the whole reason why he does he didn't train both of them anymore was because it was like a fight. He wanted to marry Miki Ando, but then Miki Ando and Javier Fernandez ended up dating and they had to leave Nicolai Morosov because of that. And she was also very young and his student. So sadly, this is not as much news as I think it is. I think the only people that really talk about it, I think only your mutuals are talking about it. The only people that really know about it and talk about it are people who are in the figure skating world. People just don't talk about it as much as they should. And it's not news for some reason, like news, news. But definitely predatory behavior and um, the people who know, know. Moving on to more Tutperitsa drama. Uh, the infamous press conference, which honestly, also iconic. I don't understand the people who were pissed off, like genuinely pissed off when this happened. I thought it was hilarious. I laughed for about 20 minutes when that little exchange happened. The body language was great. That awkward hug, amazing, which is why it's the picture. <laughs> And the little interaction at the end, which just proves to me they really don't have any sort of relationship. I mean, they can be professional. They're now touring together. I don't think they're like mean to each other. I just think that when competition arises, they um, fall back into old habits. Let's just say that. When competition arises, they, they're not friends. So put them in a competition together. They really go all out against each other. Let's just say that. And <laughs> that little exchange at the end, if you don't know, when Aliona says, so we were the winners today. And if Kenya interrupts saying there's winner on both sides. <laughs> and then Alina makes the face. And she says, well, we still have the Russian Cup. And then Evgenia says, well, congrats to you. And <laughs> Alina says, thank you. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's iconic. I wish I knew Russian so I could quote it word by word. And I would say it had everybody talking. It had everybody talking. And um, if you didn't find it funny, girl, work on your funny bone. Because it felt like an SNL skit. So, more Pyeongchang 2018. This is about Gabi and Guillaume, Papadakis and Cicero. They are the French ice dance team, and if you don't know, Tessa and Scott, who won that year, only won by a single point. 
the same way that Alina beat Evgenia by a single point. And what happened to the French team is that they had a wardrobe malfunction where apparently, I didn't even see this in the broadcast, but apparently she had like a nip slip or something. And a lot of people were debating after the, you know, the judging went the way that it went, did that wardrobe malfunction influence the scoring? And it became this whole big debate about if they hadn't had that wardrobe malfunction, they would have gotten gold and blah, 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 blah. But I think that after Tessa and Scott did their, you know, win around and they retired and every, they went on Ellen and they had their moment, I think most people were like, fine, that was Tessa and Scott's moment. And the French are still competing and they're young and they honestly are a shoe in for the gold medal at this upcoming olympics so everybody just kind of accepted and was like they'll get their gold at the next olympics it's fine but definitely was a big debate at the time but it watered down as people just kind of accepted reality so i would say your mutuals were talk at the time everybody was talking about it but right now only your mutuals still kind of contemplated so i'm gonna leave it at that moving on alina's pause on figure skating statement not retiring just a pause on competitive figure skating mm. This had everybody talking because after Alina won the world in 2019, everybody was really intrigued to see what she was going to do because we, at this point, we've seen the pattern. We know the pattern. She is 17 years old. What is she going to do? Is she going to continue competing? 3A is about to turn senior. What's going to happen? I mean, Evgenia's method of strategy was after she was already 18 and her body was already broken, she left for a different coach. Was Alina going to do that? Was she still going to try? She got all the medals. She doesn't need to try. And the the result is basically she is gonna go the loyal Tutberitze way, which is I'm gonna pause figure skating, but I'm still gonna be on all the shows. I mean, she's still in with Team Tutberitze right now, but some people are still delusional and are hoping that she's gonna come back to competition, which honestly, guys, no, it's not gonna happen. But yeah, she's definitely doing the graduating method rather than leaving. Moving on to the current little star. Actually, not really, because now it's Camila Valieva, but Anna Sherbakova hyperventilating at the Russian Nationals. I think this had everybody talking at the time, but even though people still remember it, the fact that it had a quote-unquote good outcome, I mean, she won the damn competition, has really watered down what we all saw with our own eyes. Honestly, if this wasn't recorded, like on video, people would not even remember it because the next day it was turned into a story of overcoming and Tutberitze cried and Daniel Gleikenhaus cried and so it would just turned into like this superhero she's in a super this is literally what Terry said she's a superhero she's amazing blah, blah blah which yes she's a strong girl but she should have been put in a situation where she was still reeling from the effects of COVID in her pulmonary system and then on top of that had a high fever which shouldn't have been allowed because COVID and then on top of that it was until the very last second that she was like yes I'm gonna try and then the next day miraculously she doesn't have any, any of the effects anymore so we don't know the hell what happened but in the moment after that short program everybody was talking about it but because it became such a different sort of story the next day i think uh, there's a little bit of rewriting history and i think team tutberitza tried to gaslight all of us and tell us like look at how, what an amazing strong girl she is i know she's strong but what the hell what is the other day she was breaking down and now she's some something happened i don't know what's happening but something happened Moving on, another kind of more serious allegation drama situation is when Nobunari Oda, uh, the Japanese figure skater, filed a lawsuit against his, at that time, boss, because he was the rank manager, because he said that he faced so much harassment that he was forced to quit his job as rank club manager and that the reason why he was doing that lawsuit was so that he could raise questions about the abuses in the figure skating world and that he hoped that the court will reveal the truth so that was intense because nobody really had even an inclination at least not on my feed that this coach Mehimara who has coached you know Satoko and Rika that she was some sort of negative abusive maybe even toxic coach and so this kind of gave us a peek behind the curtain and it was what we saw was ugly and so it, it shocked everybody i think it, it it had everybody talking. It didn't break FS Twitter as it should have, but it had everybody talking. Like it became a very serious allegation. I mean, people who weren't usually reporting or tweeting about figure skating were tweeting about it. And yeah, it just, it gave an insight into this happens everywhere. 
not just in the places that are maybe a little bit more vocal about it. Moving on, Elizabeth Trusen Baeva. She was a Terry, then she went to Brian Orser, and then as soon as Evgenia was a Brian Orser, she went back to a Terry. It just happened that way. I don't think it was planned, but a Terry made sure to use that, and she worked Elizabeth really hard, and it worked out for her because she got her silver medal. Evgenia ended up third at the 2019 Worlds, but after that, we haven't ever seen her again in competition, and for a long time, we didn't even just see her. We just did not see her. And a lot of people were questioning, is she gonna compete? Where is she? Is she okay? You know, this really changes the landscape because she can do a quad. I mean, that's the whole reason why she got that silver is because she landed that quad at the world. In one of these Instagram posts where the fans were asking about her, her mother responded to somebody saying, Elizabeth can barely bend her back. And her mother's a doctor on top of that. I think this had um, your mutuals talking about it. Not everybody was talking about it because not everybody's sleuthing on Instagram comments or that attentive to Instagram comments. But it was, again, another peek behind a curtain being like, oh, right, working your young body really, really hard has negative consequences, very negative. But she seems to be way better. She's now in the Champions on Ice tour of the Team Tutperice. And yeah, more international news that is not that crazy, but was definitely crazy when it happened. Mariah Bell, quote unquote, this is the way that you see it on the internet, slashing on Sulim. This was trying to be posed as a Tonya Harden, Nancy Kerrigan moment. And I'm pretty sure it got buried by maybe Mariah's publicist or maybe on publishes or something because even now if you put Mariah Bell and then just write the E on Sulem is not a recommendation that Google gives you which is interesting because they're definitely always paired together because of this story it got reported on heavily enough that I think both skaters needed to bury it yeah it gave a lot of intrigue I'd say it had everybody talking about it but it didn't make half the splash that it should have because it was definitely buried by somebody's really expensive publicist. There you go. Yulia Lipnitskaya's anorexia news. She was hospitalized for anorexia for three months, but this news didn't really come out at the time that it happened. She, reti she announced that she was retiring in 2017. She kind of stopped competing after 2016, and she was hospitalized during that time between 2016 and 2017, but the news that she was hospitalized for anorexia didn't come after it later. And I don't know if that's the reason why it didn't make a really big splash, but again, it just kind of showed impact that the sport and maybe even the environment of created by the adults in this sport, the effects that that has on a young girl's body, but also the way that they think about their bodies and their relationship with their body. So I think this had your mutuals just talking about it. It wasn't, it didn't create that big of a splashing news. And to this day, some people don't, still don't even know, honestly, because it was kind of said offhandedly during an interview, which is crazy that that's just normalized and not seen as a big deal when it should be. But anyways, our final four. Yana, if you don't know who Yana Ruskaya is, you are missing out, girlies. She is the wife of Plushenko. Yes, from Angels of Plushenko, Evgeny Plushenko. I tried to ask one of my Russian friends why she was famous in Russia, because she's very much more famous than anybody we've talked about before, including Plushenko himself. And <laughs> she was like, she's like Kim Kardashian. And I was like, what does that mean? Did she make a sex tape? She was like, no, she's famous for being famous. She married a very high political man and then she just does outrageous things and says outrageous things which just make her more famous and i'm like this explains a lot <laughs> a lot so yana called a terry tutperice an illiterate crazy woman who does not know the law let's just marinate let's just think about that for a second an illiterate crazy woman who does not know the law <laughs> if you're wondering how does somebody say a statement like that how what needs to happen for you to just say it basically what happened is that terry tuberista thought it would be a good idea to post alina's dms on her instagram story and the dms essentially were yana sending pictures and talking about the angels of Pushenko campus to alina and alina responding saying thank you but i'll stay with the terry tutperitze and then a terry tutperitze wrote on top of that screenshot so you're not trying to take alina away something along those lines because they had said that they're not trying to get tutperitze skaters to come to them yana responded by saying i do not know how these pictures found a Terry Tutberitza's hands. I hope it was not by some pulling of the phone off of Alina's cold hands. But if you were able to read the conversation, you would see that I'm not trying to lure her away. All I'm saying is giving her information that she asked for of the campus. Also, if you knew the law, you would know that you cannot post private conversations without the both parties' consent. 
which is amazing. A literate, crazy woman who does not know the law. Amazing. <laughs> I think only your mutuals were talking about this. More people should have because it's iconic, but you know what? It's fine. The mutuals gave me what I needed. Another Yana story. Recently, very recent story. So when Renat Lashev, the president of Sample 70, was saying that Alexandra Trusova was definitely coming back and that her father wanted her to come back and, you know, they were just really pushing the story that Trusova was coming back to Sample 70. When Yana was asked for a comment, as they always ask her. She said, if this doesn't stop, if Renat Lashev does not shut up, I will gather ex Tutberitsa students and staff and I will make them spill all the tea and I will do this on a broadcast on television. <laughs> she literally said, who, is, who says that? Ah, amazing, amazing. All our mutuals were talking about it, but you know what? More people need to talk about it. Kostornaya. Kostornaya coming back to Team Tutberitsa. Honestly, when this first happened, I think people were expecting it because people were just concerned for her and seeing all her erratic decisions, you know, if the programs didn't work, she would just change the programs. If the dress she didn't like it, she would just change the dress. She learned six different programs. Six in like six months. <laughs> That's how much she was moving around from Tutberitsa to Pushenko, from Pushenko to new programs, to everything was changing. And so when she came back to Tutberitsa, people were kind of expecting it. So I I think they had everybody talking for sure and what's crazy now is that the people are talking about it now differently a lot of costobots are saying now that they see costonaya more happy that she seems more stable i think a lot of people are just happy to see that the erratic stress that she was definitely engulfed in during her move after getting corona was is finally a little bit more stable maybe she feels a little more safe more secure and now she's like the president of T tiktok on team tutperitza house so <laughs> i think she's definitely at least having fun um but the way that she she was presented as coming back with no official post and having a trial period. She still, we still have one month to go to see if she can get her triple axel back. But now I think everybody's just admitted that this was the best decision to make. I don't know if this was the best decision to make. I think it was the best decision for her to make right now, but it was definitely influenced because of the Olympics. That's why I say right now. And finally, the only other thing that I could think of that is a legend and people are still fighting about it, but honestly, it should be on only your toxic mutuals because the people who still fight about the Pyeongchang results are only toxic mutuals, but the reality is that it's everybody. As soon as one toxic mutual mentions it, so many people can't help themselves but jump in there and be like, we're still talking about this. Why are we talking about this? And then they proceed to talk about it. <laughs> and you can just see the thread of debate from a toxic to a non-toxic. Everybody is just very easily tempted to jump into these debates for no damn reason because it's been over three years ago now. But yeah, that is the only other legend thing that I could think about that people are still fighting about it. If you have any other moment that you would have put on here or you wish was on here, leave it in the comments. But yes, this was very fun to do. I feel like it was just a rant. Hopefully you guys found this fun as well and I wasn't just ranting. The next video is going to be also very fun for me. Hopefully it's also fun for you. And I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.